Custom property drawers allow you to customize how fields are displayed in the inspector. The great part is that it's a very general solution, which in many cases easily can be copied into other projects and work out of the box. This is because you either use it to change how all versions of a serializable class are displayed, or you define your own attributes, like those we looked at in the last video, so that you can then apply them freely. It will take multiple videos to cover this subject properly. The first three ones will be about how to make property attributes and property drawers for them. Afterwards, I'll take on the topic of making property drawers for serializable classes. It is assumed that you watch all of those videos in the given order. This specific video will be an introductory example in which we make an attribute that allows us to randomize a float value from the inspector. The idea is to give you the basic tools you need to start playing around with it. In the next video, we'll have the more practically useful example of making an attribute that allows one to assign an interface in the inspector. The third video will be about how property attributes behave in arrays. We'll make an attribute that forces an array to display according to a given enum. But now let's get going with our first example. To make a custom property attribute, we need two scripts. One which defines the attribute itself and one that handles drawing it in the inspector. I'll begin by making the attribute, which I will call randomize attribute. It is considered good practice to suffix the name with attribute to make it more easily recognizable. Next, I'll make the drawer. It is important that this is placed inside a directory named editor. The reason for this is that when you build the game, Unity will ignore all directories with that name. So everything that only matters inside Unity should be put there so that it will be left out of the final game. I'll give it the same name as the attribute and suffix it with drawer. Let's begin with the attribute. Normally, when you make an attribute in C-sharp, you make a class that derives from system.attribute. However, we want to make a specific kind of attribute called property attribute, which is part of Unity. So instead, we will derive from property attribute. When we do this, we also limit the attribute to only be used on fields. The purpose of this attribute is that we can assign it to a float and then we can use a button in the inspector to give it a random value. So for that, we want to be able to define a minimum and maximum value. We'll make them both public as we want to be able to read them from the drawer. Then we'll make a constructor where we can assign them. This is actually the only time these variables will be set, so we might as well also make them read only. Now let's try assigning this attribute to something. I'll make an empty game object and a new script called example to put onto it. In here, let's just make a public float called value and then assign the attribute to it. As you can see, IntelliSense suggests our attribute but without the attribute suffix. The compiler understands what we mean even if we exclude the suffix, which is rather convenient. Let's just give it a minimum value of 0 and a maximum of 10. Heading into Unity, we'll see our float behaving completely normally. This is because we haven't yet written the drawer, so let's do that. The first thing we want to do is to include the Unity Editor namespace, which has a load of useful classes for interacting with the editor. This namespace is not available when you build the game, which is why it's so important that you put the script into the editor directory. Next, we want to inherit from property drawer instead of mono behavior. Then we want to tell Unity which attribute this class is the drawer for. We do that with an attribute called custom property drawer, which needs the type of our attribute. If we go into Unity again, we'll see the inspector being confused because we have now taken over the job of drawing the attribute but haven't implemented anything yet. Let's head back into the script to do that. All drawing is done inside the method on GUI, which we need to override. If you use Visual Studio, you can simply write override on GUI and click enter, and then it will automatically write it for you. In case you aren't familiar with overriding inherited methods, here's what's happening. The property drawer defines the method on GUI and allows children to override it. When we override it, the code we write here is what will be executed when the method is called instead of what was written in property drawer. If we want to, we can execute the original implementation of the method by writing base.onGUI. But in this case, we don't want to do that. As you can see, this method has three parameters. It's pretty important to understand them, so let's walk through them. A rect is simply four floats that describe a rectangle with an x and y coordinate for the top left corner and a width and a height. This is the space on the screen that's reserved for drawing our variable. Serialized property is a class that lets us interact with the variable that we're editing. 
You can think of it as our connection to the file on the disk where the details of our variable are stored. That means that this can only be used to interact with something that is serializable because it has to be able to be stored on the disk. Serialized property is similar to something called serialized object which we will look at later. You can think of that as our way to interact with selected objects in Unity. Both of them automatically handle undo functionality and UI styling for prefabs for us, so we don't have to worry about that. This is the label for our variable which will be displayed in the inspector. It contains the text itself as well as styling for the text. Inside on GUI, there are two classes that we can use to draw with. The first one is GUI, which is the classic way of doing UI in Unity. The second one is Editor GUI, which specifically is for custom editors. We'll only use GUI when what we want isn't available in Editor GUI. You can also attempt to use GUI Layout and Editor GUI Layout, which automatically will handle positioning of everything, but the Unity manual states that they aren't available in Property Drawer for performance reasons, and sometimes you get weird behavior and errors from using them. I'll begin by showing what by far is the easiest way to display a variable in the inspector. It is done by calling editor GUI.property field. We need to pass the position and the property. This will tell Unity to draw it the way it normally would draw a variable of this type. If we then go into Unity, we can see that it now looks completely normal. But this is not what we want, so let's delete it and get started with the manual solution. First we'll make a field which will display a label with the name of the variable and one with the current value. We do that with editor GUI.label field. It takes a position to be drawn in, the first label with the name, and then we'll make a new label that displays the value of the variable. We access that value by writing property.floatValue and then we convert it to a string. Going into Unity, we can see it displayed correctly. Also, notice that the two labels automatically are aligned to work properly when you change the width of the inspector. Now we will make the button to randomize the value. It is only available in GUI, so we get it by calling GUI.button. Notice that this also needs a rect for where on the screen it should be drawn. We cannot just give it the same as we gave the label field, as it will cause the button to be drawn on top of the labels. Let's instead make two new rects, one for the label field and one for the button. The constructor takes the coordinates of the top left corner and then a width and a height. We want it to be displayed at the top of the space we have gotten in the inspector, so we'll give it the same x, y and width as position. Then we'll give it a height of 16, which is the standard height of fields. We want the button to be displayed right under, so it will get the same x and the y will be right where the previous rec left off. It will get the same width and also height of 16. Let's put our new recs to use. The button also needs some text, which will be randomized. Now, the way this method works is that it returns a boolean, which is true when the button is clicked. So we'll use the method as the condition of an if statement, and if it is clicked, we'll give the variable a new value, which we will determine with random.range. For this, we need the two values we pass to the attribute. Property drawer has a variable called attribute, which is a reference to the attribute. Unfortunately, this is of type property attribute, so we need to cast it to randomize attribute so we can access the values. This is no problem though, as randomize attribute inherits from property attribute, and we know that this drawer only works for exactly that attribute. I'll just save the result in a new variable called randomize attribute. Now we can pass the minimum and maximum values to our range method. If we head into Unity, we'll immediately notice one more issue that needs to be solved. The inspector hasn't given us enough space to draw everything. More precisely, the position parameter on onGUI is not tall enough. This is because we haven't specified that we need more space than usual. To solve this, we need to override the method called getPropertyHeight, which is used to determine the height needed. Here, we will simply return the combined height of our label field and button, which is 32. And with that, we now have a functional property drawer that displays properly in the inspector. We can try out the button and see that it works just fine. There are just two improvements that I'd like to make before moving on. The first one is that this attribute is meant to be used on float, and the console will go crazy with errors if we try something else, like a string. The reason for this is that in the property drawer, we attempt to read and write the float value of the variable, which of course is not possible when it is not a float. 
I'd like a bit less chaotic way to show that something is wrong though, so before drawing anything I'll just make sure that the variable indeed is a float, which is done by checking if the property type of the serialized property is equal to serialized property type dot float. If this is not the case, we'll instead display an error label that states the problem. With this, we can quickly see the problem in the inspector, but we won't be spammed with errors. The second improvement I'd like to make has to do with prefabs. I'll give this some random value and then make a prefab out of the game object. Now, if I change the value on this instance of the prefab, it's going to be different from the default value of the prefab. We'd expect this to be indicated by the label turning bold and getting a blue outline. We'd also expect to be able to right click the label and choose to either revert to the default value or to make this the new default. But neither happens, so our only option is to go look at all the overrides on the game object and either revert or apply them. Luckily, there is a very simple solution to this. In our script, we simply need to call two methods. First, before we begin drawing, we call editor GUI.begin property and pass it in position, label, and property. Then, when we're done, we call editor GUI.end property. With this done, Unity will automatically handle it all for us. As you can see, the label now looks right and we get the right click functionality we wanted. That was all for this video. Hopefully you've learned enough to attempt to tweak the drawer we made and maybe you can even experiment with making another attribute and drawer. I'll see you in the next video where we'll make an attribute that lets us assign an interface in the inspector. Consider coming by our discord while waiting. Otherwise, just have a spectacular day.